So I'm very happy to be screening this film tonight. Take a look at this heart. It's a new documentary. And uh, who was here last year for Tin Soldiers? We had a disability and visibility. So some of you were here. Thank you. And uh, the director, Ben Duffy, who's here this evening, he mentioned this film during the Q&A. And very fortunately, the film was completed this year. And I watched it, and I thought it was a, an outstanding film. And I'm really thrilled to be showing it. Um, I think you'll find it heartwarming, funny, candid, and enlightening. Um, so you know, I, I try, I've been trying to program a film that's either directed by someone with a disability or is, and or is about disabilities. And I read this quote last year, but I think it's important to reiterate. It was from a Teen Vogue article by Robin Lambert, um, a young woman with cerebral palsy. She said, we want to be seen. It's validating to see someone who looks like you on screen, on a billboard, or in a magazine. Unfortunately, this rarely happens for disabled people. But if we have representation, disability will be normalized, and negative attitudes like fear and bias can be shifted. While the industry is slowly getting more representative, there is more work to be done. Still, I'm optimistic. And this is why I continue to, to program films both by and about those with disabilities, because it's vital that we continue to give this community as much visibility as possible. Um, so I'm uh, so thrilled you're here. You know, this film we build as the world premiere. There were a few like smaller screenings. This is the first time it's being shown in a festival, and I'm sure that it will be included in many, many more festivals from here. And then after the film, we'll have the three uh, alumni, three of the actually many alumni who worked on the film, director Ben Duffy, and the two and two of the cinematographers, Waylon Bell and Michael Sassano, uh, they are all undergraduate film alumni from School of Visual Arts. And uh, and we did say in the program that uh, one of the subjects, Ali Stroker, would be here. She's a Broadway actress who was seen in Spring Awakening. Unfortunately, she had a conflict this evening and is unable to make it. But she sends her regards, and uh, she's thrilled about the film as well. Um, so. After the film, stick around for the Q&A. We'll have a current student moderating that. And I'm trying to see if there's anything else I need to tell you but to, besides turn off your cell phones. Uh, I think that's probably it, except that uh, we also have a, a short that's going to play before the film. It's by alumna Anais LaRocca. It's called Good Bones. And unfortunately, another person who couldn't be here tonight is Anais. She sends her regards as well. It's an unfortunately, unfortunately she can't be here, but fortunately she just had an addition to her family, so good reason. Um, so a little round of applause for Anais. We'll send her the video from this. And uh, so here's Good Bones, and take a look at this heart, and we'll see you after for the Q&A. Enjoy the film. Uh, ben Duffy is the director and producer of Take a Look at This Heart. At age 28, he's already made eight documentaries. After his freshman year at SVA, he made his first feature-length doc, We Are Skateboarders, which became the second highest viewed feature-length skateboarding documentary on YouTube. Ben continues to operate on micro-budgets to complete his beloved documentaries. Waylon Bell, who actually is a technician here at SVA Theater, so we're very proud to have him on this Q&A, is a New York-based cinematographer who's worked on everything from feature films, music videos, commercials, and documentaries. With more than a decade of filmmaking experience, Waylon's dedication to the craft and his unique eye have taken him on projects all across the US and as far as the Siberian tundra. We'll have to hear about that. And Michael J. Sassano is a New York-based camera operator and editor. He's worked on documentaries, commercials, live events, corporate videos, and this looks like this is in skateboarding videos throughout the US and Europe, a fanatic of perfectionism. Michael is happiest losing himself in capturing moments and creating them. Please welcome Ben, Waylon, Michael, and our moderator, Ari. How long has this been in the making for? Uh, March of 2017 is when I started wow. to um, do the, that's when I started the crowdfunding campaign. So that was like when the whole uh, AJ um, from the film, had given me the idea six months before then, and um, yeah, and uh, it took me six months to get the courage to get after it. So yeah. I started the crowdfunding campaign in March, and then my executive producer, Dan Garcia, who's in the audience, who did my rock through this whole process, uh, he jumped on board, and yeah, from then, yeah. You said, AJ, is that um, who you said reached out to you in the he, film, he was, um, I was interviewing him for a company that I was working for, and um, he had 
just said, Ben, you should make a documentary on love and sexuality in the disabled community. Yeah. It was, it was that simple. Yeah, because yeah, I feel like it's not discussed like, at all. <laughs> not, I yeah. mean, maybe not in like this maybe. kind of like, right. scale of film, you know. Maybe. Yeah. That's why um, I was really interested when I learned about the topic of your film. Because personally, my mom has MS, so I've had like experience with disabled people. I was wondering if you had, Priya, did you know anyone? Is it, how long has your relationship with the disabled community been? Anyone, never. I mean, your your history. I have a dead battery. Sorry. <laughs> Here you go. Okay. Um, me and Ben grew up together, we went to high school together, and um, we didn't have really, we didn't have any friends that had like physical disabilities in high school, really, but um, growing up I had a brother with autism, so disability was kind of, it was always in my life, and I was surrounded by it, and Ben would come over and hang out, we were friends, we've been friends since 13, so that was kind of maybe the first time that, I, don't, I mean, 14th or whatever. <laughs> And um, I think you worked at a you worked at a camp, right, for a little while, and we'll talk about that a little bit. I guess that was like when disability kind of started. It well, my for you. my mom uh, and my stepdad growing up were occupational therapists, so I was around autism a lot. And then also like my mom always makes sure that I like Ben. Don't you don't leave this part out. But she had an, she has an anterior horn cell disease which I couldn't really tell you what it is. You have to Google it. She's told me a million times, but I keep forgetting exactly what it is. But um, it's definitely a disease that runs through your spine, and it left her hands paralyzed. For the most part, she's had, like, 36 hand surgeries. So um, I don't know. I just, like, as a young man, was super empathetic towards her. And, like, I remember, like, being at the grocery store, and, like, sometimes the clerks would, like, give her an attitude about taking so long to, like, pick up the change after they give her a change. And I was like, oh. Like, I would, I would get heated, you know? So that was, like, my earliest experience with physical disability. Um, but, I mean, it's amazing. Like, we go through life and we see a lot of homeless veterans, you know, who are oftentimes in wheelchairs and amputees or something like that. And that's a lot of all we know, you know? And then, so, it's, it was cool to dive headfirst into, the, you know, the community. So, so what I was getting at before was... In 2012, he made a film called Heart Child, which focused on autism. And then after that film, we did another film called Tin Soldiers that Ben directed that um, was about people who have physical disabilities who do um, adaptive sports. So that was kind of the beginning of him and I working on films that you know showcase people with um, physical disabilities, really. And then uh, you started working for You Can, right, after that? Yeah. That's cool. So um, what I really wanted to know is, um, as a film student, I wanted to ask you, <laughs> what has this experience taught you that you feel that possibly you just couldn't, a classroom couldn't touch on? Not even just from the production standpoint, but working with a variety of people. I'm going to say uh, one of the, yo, Ryan, is this on? <laughs> uh, I'm going to say one of the, one of the things that, uh, I, I learned is you just can't underestimate people. Uh, you can't overestimate people. People have way more fortitude and strength than you know. And like, you can see, you saw the film, the film is good. But to sit in the interviews and talk to these people, um, every single person on that screen at the end of the day is a hero of mine. Just from hearing them and what they overcame and uh, it, it was, it's truly, I think I said it at one point, but like, the human gold, you know? So it's just like one of the most humanizing and just uh, satisfying things in the world is to get out there and, you know, talk to people and learn their story because everybody's got challenges, but like you get over it and you get through it. That's part of life. What is it like shooting for a crazy director? It's crazy. <laughs> ben Duffy is crazy. There was a moment, um, everyone saw the, the swimming pool dance scene, there is footage of Ben in that pool, <laughs> screaming, I, I don't feel the passion. <laughs> holding the camera too. He's holding the camera. Yeah. He's like, where's the passion? It's great. Um. <laughs> True story. How did you um, go about finding people to interview? 
What was the process like? Um, it was it was the easiest process you can ever imagine for any film I've ever made. Um, I was working for a company called UCAN, which is a company from Israel that um, specializes in finding products for people with disabilities. And I had produced 40 videos for them. And so I met so many people from the disabled community like that. And, uh, and plus Tin Soldiers, my last film. Um, and then when I did the Indiegogo, um, I had probably like 50 people reach out to me, um, just like, oh, I'd love to be a part of this, you know? So I actually had to turn away about 35 people for this film. It was, you know, it was really heartbreaking. And then I, and I emailed everybody um, later on, and I was like, guys, I'm so sorry. Like, I would have loved, I planned on doing all this, but I didn't have a budget. I didn't have, we just didn't have enough time in the film. So I was like, uh, that, like the ending, a little bit of like people shot stuff on their iPhones. I, I wanted to have like that kind of like that home movie montage kind of feel to it, like when we were growing up as kids and stuff. Um, and so some of the people who were uh, mad at me <laughs> sent me footage. So I hopefully remedy the situation a little bit. But so that's how I found everybody. It was all, it was great. It was so easy. So that's what that's what I was gonna ask after. Um, I was gonna say, did you find that people were maybe hesitant to talk about such a private part of their lives? But it seems like they were happy to. What do you think, yeah. Leland? We had someone. We had someone. There was one person who asked not to be in it. Yeah. You mean after the fact? After the fact. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that was more so because she wasn't happy with her interview. Yeah. She's. That's what she said. She was like, "I love the project, but I just feel like my. Inter I'm just a little uncomfortable." She was a good interview. Oh, it was a great interview. It was yeah, a great like, interview. And I respected it. You know, I was yeah. like, all right, that's cool. Most people kind of knew what they were getting themselves into. I mean, they knew the topic and everything. And you can see there, there are open books up yeah. there. No, they were totally. They were like, uh, like oozing to be in the film. Like they, like because it's because like you said, it's not a discussed subject that much. So it's like, they were like, oh my god, like I, I, I it came to a point where I wouldn't even bring questions to the interview. I'd just be like. All right, so yeah, so you know what this is about. What's what's good? And then they just started. They just they really exploded on camera, and it was a beautiful thing to see for sure. Yeah, they're just going for it. Yeah. Um, so. Love you, Ben. <laughs> so um, all the people in the film, some of them were born with conditions. Some of them went through horrific accidents, injuries. Um, there was one quote towards the end that she said, um, at eight I was out running and by 8.15 she was in the hospital for more than six months. And that's really just, you're faced with the realization that it could be anything or anyone. Just what, what kind of, what did you learn about just their humanity? Like just that, Oh, that's what I really like about the film. It uncovers like their humanity, <laughs> and like these are people. What do you have to, what do you have to say about that? <laughs> what do I have to say about that? I mean, it's it's. I think anybody can like look at that or look look through any of the experience that any of these people that went through tra traumatic events went through and just be like, that could be me, like crossing the street. You know, I do this, I do that. It's easy to get hurt. It's easy to, it's it's really easy to, to end up like this. So, um, so yeah, it was definitely surprising to hear. I think um, Patrick, who got who got run over, that was like that was probably one of the more crazy stories. When I watched the footage, when when Ben was editing, and I watched the footage, and I was like. That could have been that could have been anyone. So I mean, hearing those things is definitely kind of like it like warps your world, and you're just like you kind of like get taken back for a moment. But um, I don't know. I don't even know. That's just my initial reaction. His story was kind of like one that really struck home with me. Obviously, um, Margarita who got shot like that's an insane story. So um, yeah, I don't know. Those are the ones that kind of like stuck the most with me. I think there. Uh, um, there's something to be said. Like I, I uh, having done this, and I've done some other, I've done some other weird docs that delve into some really dark stuff, and it really puts stuff in perspective. Yeah. And I, I remember it's still to like it's probably weekly at this point, but after after the first shoot, daily, I wake up and I like thank my legs that they're there, and I realize that they could go at any moment, because <laughs> it happens that fast. 
you know. And it's crazy, it's crazy to me, uh, who, is it Keith? Who, like, yeah. he got hit on a motorcycle, yeah. still rides a motorcycle. Yeah. Doesn't care. I rode that motorcycle. I was on the back of that motorcycle. Awesome. I understand. I totally get it. But, like, you'd think he wouldn't, but people, man, they like what they like, and they're not going to be stopped. That's, this is, like, fortitude. It's human fortitude. Uh, Anything else? Yeah, I mean, I would say uh, I I am in total admiration of all of it, and I it, I don't think it always has to do with physical too. I think it's just the human spirit is in your mind and in your heart, you know. And uh, like it goes back to like, well, why do you know we're, we're at a film school right now, so we talk about you know, like it goes back to well, why do people make films, you know, and. Um, like for me personally, as far as the human spirit goes, like I, I, when I was 18, someone really important to me was like, uh, I spent a lot of time with someone on their deathbed. And, and the person was like, looking back, never acknowledging any of the hardships in their life. They were only talking about the most beautiful and joyous moments. And I think, you know, I, I've, I've personally, and you know, I talked about some of my issues in the film and I've personally went through some really, really, I went through hell and back making films in, over the last 10 years, you know, like really awful experiences. And, um, but I think when it comes to the human spirit, because I know that one day I'll look back and say, I'll only, to only think about those joyous times, I think it's beautiful to think about um, that if you have to go through the joy and misery of it all, then, it, I mean, if the joy is that much more powerful than the misery, then it makes it all worth it. And, and for me as a filmmaker working with this population who inspire me so much and who I'm in such admiration of, um, if, if the misery, um, if, oh, what was I gonna say, shit. Um, it's just, I, I actually I just spaced out, but yeah, I mean, like, if the joy is if the joy is that much if the joy is that much more powerful, then then it's all worth it. And if the and if the misery is there, then I want to at least help people why I'm going through that misery. You know, yeah. that's that's how I've always felt about. It. That's why I always go level ten yeah. on making my films and nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm going. <laughs> Sorry, I spaced out really hard right there. It was fun. It was cool. <laughs> I'm going to ask one more question, and we're going to open it up to the audience. So having said all of that, if you were to give one piece of advice to any aspiring filmmakers who wants to delve into deep topics like this, what would you say? Boys. <laughs> Just do it, and don't be scared. And ask any question you want. And if somebody's willing to sit down in front of you, they're probably willing to answer whatever you have to ask them. And you're probably going to get the best part of your interview like that. And then um, the other thing is don't censor anything. Uh, I'm going to say end the interview as quick as you can. <laughs> like, just get in there, start the interview, and go, cool, that's it. Do you, that, we're done. Do you, do you have anything else to say? And then shoot the next 20 minutes, because that's the best part. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so now we're going to open up to the audience. Uh, Dan, you want to come up, buddy? Wherever you are. Producer Dan Garcia up. Um, come on, Dan. Come on, Dan. Come on, Dan. He, he wasn't on the first part because he's not, not an SVA alum, but we're proud to have him here. And uh, so let's give Dan a round of applause. And we, have, we actually have another SVA alum who worked on the film, Mike Flanagan. Here and there, he's in the back. Is anyone, it? anyone, any other? Flanny's here? Any, anyone else who worked on the film? Hey! Anyone else? <laughs> so, Scottish. Small, everyone's got mics. All right, questions in the audience. That one right here. Be nice. <laughs> um, hi, guys. My name is Grace. Hi. Um, I just wanted to say, you know, first of all, thank you. I think that the film is one of the breakthroughs because I've been involved in the disabled community because I have a congenital disability, I was born with spina bifida. So I, seeing somebody on there is really great because it's so, you guys took the time and actually got to know these people. And it was weird because when you had these discussions, 
and specifically when you were asked questions, you responded with they. Like, there was this sense of objectivity that you were putting on, on people with disability. And as much as I'm grateful for the film and how much I enjoyed the film, I couldn't help see an analogy of what you guys were saying to petty porn. So I'm wondering, how would you redefine how, I'm sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to say this in the most positive way because I know it's not pity porn. But as somebody with a disability and the way that you objectified us in your answers, oh my God, they're so great. Oh my God, they got up in the morning. Like we get that every single day of our lives. So how do you, how would you respond differently when somebody like me says that as a person with disability, your comments are ma making it seem like it's pity porn to you. Like we are an object of your aspiration, as you would call it. So I guess my question is, how would you clearly define that differently, that this film is not pity porn? Obviously you show that, you know, that we are more than what people see us and you delve further into that and I thank you for that because you took that time. But I guess to me it just felt like a little bit the way that you objectified us in your answers with the interview as pity porn. I'll attempt. You, 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 didn't, you didn't even do the interview. Yeah, this is you. All right, this is us. I could try it. No. Um, I, I found, so I found this a really, really hard topic to talk about because clearly we're like uh, four able-bodied white dudes yeah. up here, exactly. which is like not... Uh, I'm actually Puerto Rican. <laughs> oh, there we go, there we go, there we go. Um, we are three able-bodied white dudes. Um, and it's, uh, it's hard, I don't, like, if you, if, it, like, there's no one with spina bifida up there. You know, there's no one with, who's missing an arm. There's no one, like, we didn't, it, it's, uh, the disabled community is a very hard community to talk about because it's so uh, unique. Everyone is so unique and so individual. So I've found it really hard not to offend. And I'm really sorry uh, that we sounded like that. Uh, I apologize. Yeah, for sure. No? Yeah, you, you can if you'd like. I, I would love to hear a response if actually if you have one. I yeah. Would. No, I think I just want to say, you know, that was a question that wasn't out of like, you know, like it wasn't a bad coming out of a bad place. It was just like, why is this making me feel this way? How would you react if I said it? And can we have a discussion on it? Because I think it's a you're right. It's a very complex topic. And it's like it's really hard not to offend people. And I really wanted your perspective on it because it's like, Sometimes I question myself why I get offended to how people see me. And I think your perspective, like everybody's unique and it's hard not to offend somebody on it, is very interesting to me and it opens up a different perspective and I really appreciate you being honest about it. Thank you. You're welcome, thank you. I just, I just wanted to say, I think, I think um, part of it is that obviously you've probably dealt with this whole, with this problem or feelings like this your whole life. Like, and, and along the way in the last film that we worked with, um, one of the subjects, um, this woman Elena told us that like she hated being called inspirational, and I didn't understand what I was like. What do you mean you hate being called inspirational? Like, how could you hate a compliment like that? And she explained it to me and just kind of like you know just just as you did, and it took me a while to even wrap my head around it and like fully understand it. But once I did, or at least to the capacity that I could, um, I realized what I was doing. And I think despite the fact that we've maybe grown up or have experienced whatever kind of disability we, we have in our lives, at least the three of us, we're still getting used to being good at talking about it. And hopefully, I mean, I'm not a speaker, so hopefully the film speaks for it, like yeah. the way that we feel about it better than I can. So, so I apologize, I hope I get better. And it's also why we really wish to have people from the film here, like uh, we were in Malibu yeah. and uh, we had Angela there and oh man, it was just so helpful because just to direct some of the questions or someone who you know who's in it who's going through it. It's just like it's it is a lot of pressure on us for sure. But then again, I only get 
<laughs> I only get the back backlash in New York, so it's got to be in New York. <laughs> Everywhere else, people are like, but we're, no, we're, we're very glad we get the backlash. It's well deserved. <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. We like absolutely. the question, I'm just yeah. New Yorkers, you know. <laughs> Really, thank you guys, because I think the fact that you guys are honest about it and saying, you know, your perspective on it, it gives us, specifically those who have disabilities, who go through this every single day, get to know a little bit more about you who made the movie. So I really genuinely thank you. You're welcome. Hi, I want to thank you all for making the film. I thought it was terrific. Um, it really opened my eyes. And I just learned so much from the film. I guess I don't have many disabled friends. I do have uh, friends with an autistic child. So I thought it was really terrific and it was so inspiring. And uh, to see what people go through and it's amazing that guy with the one leg that uh, has the athletic school in Bozeman, I thought that was fantastic, and everybody else's spirit. And I think about it, you know, I gripe, or people around me gripe for standing on line too long for waiting for coffee or something. And when you see what these people go through and their strength, I loved it. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, I had a very different reaction to the movie, actually. I would not say that I found it inspirational. <laughs> I actually um, saw what I felt personally was the most humanizing part of the film was kind of the opposite reaction of what you said, um, that I really felt the range of how everyone has a relationship with love and sexuality, that some people find success in love and some people don't. And I feel like in your movie, uh, there were people who, who did find romance. And in a way, it's as rare in the disabled community as it is with the people I know who are able-bodied. And I really loved the way that the movie reflected that um, love is as equally difficult or maybe more difficult to find in the disabled community, but you also find these people who, one of these quotes that really resonated with me is you find those golden people more easily, that you're filtering out um, the, the dicks, basically. <laughs> um, so for me, the movie actually wasn't necessarily inspirational in the sense of like, I wasn't necessarily admiring or you know, thinking like, oh wow, these people overcome everything so easily. I actually found that a lot of the people in the movie didn't necessarily overcome uh, the struggle of getting to know somebody just the way that you know someone you might know who is quote unquote normal also can't um, find love. <laughs> so I thought that the most humanizing part about it was to show that there's that range in the disabled community as well that you have people who get lucky and you have people that don't. That's real. Thank you. Um, hey guys, uh, my question is more technical. Um, oh <laughs> no, it's, it, Shoot. it might be for your EP. Um, some documentaries have like a little caption underneath, you have like voice of director Ben Duffy at the beginning, but then after that, people aren't introduced by name. And I was just sort of curious as to why you made that technical choice, um, because you're speaking about these people now in this interview using, like, calling Margarita by name. Yeah. Um, doesn't seem like it's a choice for anonymity reasons, so I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, honestly, I... <clears throat> the first answer is laziness. I swear to you, like I just never got to it, or I never wanted to get to it, and I'll, and then I, and then I did a little guest speaking here at SVA uh, for the Camille's editing class, and uh, the students were like, "Oh yeah, we love that. that there's no names," and I was like, "Oh yeah, great. Well, that's that <laughs> good because I wasn't planning on putting them in." But uh, <laughs> um, no, I, I think we should. I think we should. Do you, Ben? Do you? Distributor, do it. Do you guys think we should? <laughs> 
Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, I know we should. I... Raise of hands, raise of hands, please. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys Shit, have... it's overwhelming, Ben. We should do that. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll have our distributor do it for us. It'll be easy, yeah. easy peasy. Easy, yeah. But uh, yeah. yeah, no, there's no, you know, run around answer for that one. I would just first name. No, you got to be for the people. You got to put them all. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was. I guess I was just wondering. It seemed like a lot of the subjects of the film feel ostracized often for their their appearance or their ability. Um, was it was it a process getting some of the people comfortable on camera? Were they camera shy, or were they more eager to express their perspective and their story? No. I don't think anybody. I mean, uh, they all knew they all knew they were going to get shot. And stuff, but it was it was a process of like you know you start shooting it's always a little weird. You roll up to someone's house, you meet them for the first time, and then you're like, all right, we're gonna film you now. Can you talk about sex. <laughs> so it was weird. It was weird, but like we got into it. Like Angela, like the the simulated sex scene was one of the strangest things to shoot, but also like like so I like I can't thank her enough for being comfortable enough to yeah. do that. Uh, also, she gave me one of the best pep talks. She gave you good pep talks, too. Just like, seriously, like, get out there, just date people. Like, yeah. so good. Angela is, was a true champion for the film. When I was going through a lot of doubts, I uh, went over to her house once, and she was like, Ben, you have to do this film. And so she, that's part of the reason why she's in the film. And yeah, when we did that sex scene, uh, I was super, I was like, well, I knew I had to be done. And I'm like, my director instinct comes out. I'm like, oh, screw everything else. Like, this is going to happen. And her and her boyfriend, Stefano, were so cool. That, but yeah, Waylon was like, oh, man. Like, we are going to do this, huh? And I'm like, yeah, Waylon, it's, it, what are you doing? We got to set up right now. Oh, geez. I didn't know we were going to be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it definitely came in a shock for him. And, and Angela was like, oh, man, like, I guess maybe on right before we started shooting, and she was like, Oh man, we really are doing this right now. But I don't know. We just, you know, I was. It wasn't like, all right, like get into that position and let's see what's, just see what you got. It was, it was like, it was like, no, let's like, let's make this as lighthearted as possible and like, just go go through the motions and and we'll see what we get, you know. And so I think that's the best way to, when it comes to a really sensitive subject, it's the really best way to direct anything. You just kind of, you have to go into it like. Not to sound pretentious, like, oh, you have to go into it. I'm just saying the way I went into it was, like, go into it like you just want to learn from these people, you know, and or from from anybody, really. Like, the, to, to get a good, bold answer, you just got to be willing to say, you tell me, you know. Don't go in there with, like, well, I did my research on love and sexuality, so what do you got? You know, it's just I want to, I'm here to learn, you know. So I think that's maybe why everybody was so comfortable, maybe. I don't know. Hopefully. Uh, and while I'm walking to the next person, Dan, do you want to talk a little bit, bit about how you came to this documentary? Because the rest of the people seem like it's the, the SVA crew. How I got into the documentary? Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, well, Ben and, and I and, and Sass, we went to uh, high school together. And uh, how did I get into the documentary? Uh, I think I saw something on Facebook one time while I was on the train coming home. I think I had like two beers in me. And, uh, passion, Dan, more passion. <laughs> That's a true story, man. Like, what do you mean? Like, uh, yeah, so I was on my uh, my way home on the train, Metro North, and uh, yeah, uh, I think it was like a crowd for me. Was it was Indiegogo? It? Yeah, Indiegogo. Yeah, and um, I uh, I saw it. I watched. It wasn't a trailer, um, but it was just. Uh, I, what did you make, Ben? Just it was just like seven like a montage talking about why the film is so why I wanted to get it funded. Yeah, it was just him talking about the film, his ideas for the film, what he hoped to accomplish. And um, for me, it really resonated because um, my older sister had CP and she passed away uh, many years ago and she was older than me. And uh, she passed away before she reached my age today. So um, when uh, when I saw what Ben wanted to do, it just, I was like, all right, all right, man, I'm I'm totally on board. I was like, we, I, I need to get this made. Like, I was in a position where I just felt like, you know, my nine to five job sucks. It's not, as I'm sure most people who have a nine to five job would agree, uh, you know, it's not doing it for me anymore. So 
I just wanted something a little bit more. I wanted to be able to give back and just feel good about something. And um, so I, I think I literally, I messaged you that night on Facebook. I was like, here's my call phone me. number, call me. Right on Facebook. Yeah, it was just like, call me. You called me, and I think on my ride home via Bluetooth, I was like, we talked about it. I was like, I'll get you the money. I was like, let's just make this happen. I believe in this. I was like, I've, I've seen trailers of your other shit. I believe in you, and let's just, let's, excuse my French. I was like, let's fucking do this. <laughs> yeah. And that is literally, it sounds so simple. It, it has not yeah, been, but. <laughs> that, will, that was how you got into it. That's how it man. started, though. Then you had to start dealing with me and money and all that. I'm deep in it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Deep in Ben. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey guys, uh, my name is Alex. I'm actually Grace's partner. Um, so uh, it, it, it's really strange because you know she's the one with the disability. And I'm the one who's able-bodied, and I've, I've met a ton of her disability friends, but I've never really met anyone that's sort of like been in my position. Um, so it's just really awesome, and like I, th this film has been so accurate in the way it's portrayed both uh you know both sides that it, it feels nice to like not feel alone about that like i get i, I get asked constantly like how do you do that and i do it because she's the fucking funniest person in the world i know um but there's also this i can show them now and that that's amazing so thank you very much sorry not much of a question more of a comment really but uh it. thank you so much coming from you that means a lot thank you yes. no thank you ma'am uh, so yeah, love the work, guys. It was awesome. Uh, one thing that I came away with was uh, how amazing these people were because they were so honest and forthcoming. They were very earnest. They were speaking their truth, so to speak. Uh, that really resonated with me. That was why they were glowing beacons of humanity to me. So I wanted to ask you guys, like, what was the most powerful thing that you walked away with? Like, if we could go down the line. Um, well, it, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I have gotten this question quite a few times, and it's hard for me to answer because, like, I always want to say, like, oh, I'm in admiration of these people and stuff like that. But, um, I mean, the truth of it is, like, I think the most powerful thing that I personally walked away with was, like, just the power of how much... I personally fall in love with my films and how difficult that is to get out of once it's done. Um, I mean, I don't. I, I feel like you're asking me like, well, how? What did I kind of take away from the people, but in the film? But I don't know. I mean, I was just thinking. I was just in Oregon two days ago screening the film, and I was thinking about it on a bike ride. Like, you know, the n films and making this film in particular. I used to say like. If anybody came up to me and said, I will pay you any money to make any film in the world, I'd be like, you don't have to because I'm already making that film, you know? This film, like, moved me and there was a tidal wave of movement in my heart and, like, it was, the, the, making the film, my life was like a utopia for a year and, Dan, I really thank you for that. Um, but, uh, I don't know, it's like, it's like, it's not even like you're living the dream, it's like you're living a complete lifetime and in that lifetime, you get everything you ever wanted, and you are helping people, and they're helping you. And then, you know, I reached the pinnacle when, like, I went to Puerto Rico, and I helped Grichel out of her chair, and me, her, and Carla were on the cliff. And it's cool, like, symbolically, you know, we're all at the edge of the cliff, and, you know, all you really have at that point, you know, whether you're disability or not, is your hands to help you up, and help the person next to you from falling off the cliff. So, you know, symbolic, I think that's why that's the end of the film. But feeling that equality between the three of us and giving someone that freedom that wouldn't have had that, like the way I could just, oh, I'm just going to crawl off to the, to the edge and just see the beauty, that was the meaning, most meaningful moment of my life, you know? And so when that lifetime that I'm talking about ended, it just kind of felt like, not to sound dramatic, but it felt like I'd like die, you know, inside. And like, since then, um, I don't know. It goes back to what I was saying about the joy and misery. I mean, it, it was all worth it, but the most powerful thing that I took away from this is truly the power of, if you get that one in a lifetime experience to make that film that you just want to make so bad and you'll turn everything else away for it, you know? 
So, but I really got to thank these boys, especially Dan for uh, not just especially Dan actually, all, all yeah. them, but all, Dan and and Dan. Dan, yeah, but also you Will, would not have made this Will movie without Sasser Willen either. <laughs> you tell me all the time, don't even <laughs> Will, yeah, these no, two Dan, guys. Dan, I mean, getting your film funded is an amazing thing, but also Whalen from. Three days after I launched that Indiegogo, Will and said, Duffy, I will shoot for you for free. I don't care what it takes. Basically nothing. Be a part. You, you did, bro. <laughs> like, I, I just want to be a part of this film. And um, all of this, all of this was the biggest take. It was just the power of the love that I felt. So well, it's a long answer, but that's the only answer I got. Thank you. I don't know how I backed that up, but whatever. <laughs> um, more specifically, like more like your question, I guess. Um, who did like? Who's my favorite? Kind of like, or who? What? What persons? I think um, I really liked Ali, which is the blonde, Ali Stroger. The way that she speaks and the way that she is so self-aware of like the feelings that she had and the feelings that she has, and that whole way that she kind of just carries herself. I like. I see her character, and I was there for that interview, so it's a little more special for me. But um, I saw the way that she carried herself, and the way that she was so mindful of her emotions and everything like that. And I like was like, I want to be like that. So maybe that that was one thing that I took away that I really enjoyed. Um, I think about Spike Kane, uh, the, uh, Bald British, the British surfer, uh, a, a lot, especially like lonely on a Friday night. I just hear Spike Kane saying, the amount of penetrative sex is minuscule. I'm always like, yeah, no, that's okay, it's okay. Life is okay. <laughs> that's a great answer. <clears throat> oh, you're good. That's it, that's my favorite part. Oh, you're, you're good. All right, man, uh, I don't know how to follow that up. <clears throat> All right. um, what was the question? Lindsay? What's your biggest takeaway, pretty much, you know? My biggest takeaway. My biggest takeaway. Well, let me ask you guys. Uh, raise your hand if you're a Superman fan. Anybody? Batman? It's one or the other. You can't be both. There's no, <laughs> none of that shit. All right, well, I'm a, I'm a Batman fan. So um, my takeaway from the film is that these people are not your superheroes. They're not your heroes, man. We've heard that time and time again, I think, at a lot of screenings nowadays, uh, more recently. Um, they're not your, your superheroes, and they, they don't want to be the people in this film. Uh, you know, they're just like you and I. Ben and I were talking about this earlier today. Ben, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote Ben, who was quoting someone else earlier today. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Ben. Uh, so he went to a screen, the screening in Oregon a couple days ago, and someone came up to him and said, you know, he was, thank you so much for just, just I, someone who, who I, I don't know what what was up with them, but they had, but what was up? Uh, Disability woman, of some sort? A, a mother had come to the screening, and she said, my 13-year-old son has a physical disability, and all I want for him is to uh, find love and to just simply lay down next to someone one day and that's my biggest fear and that's my biggest hope and now I know that th that it's not going to be an issue. I know it's, um, I feel so much better because I know that it's a possibility. The film is about, not only is the film about love, but it's just, it's about normalizing, you know, um, anyone who has any sort of disability, whether it be physical, mental, whatever it is, but just normalizing disability amongst human beings. Um, I guarantee most of you have something wrong with you, whether we see it or not in this fucking room. You, there's something fucked up with most of you. Um, and that's what this film is all about. And we get questions about it all the time, but that's, that's what it comes down to. It's love and how you're all fucked up. <laughs> and that's what I learned. Uh, I just have a suggestion of recommendation since you guys do films about disability. Um, it's also good to have like closed captioning. So like for people hard of hearing, can't really um, we have that. We because yeah. we, I, not to cut you off, but oh. we do have it, and I'm not sure why we didn't get it here for that. And, I, and we do apologize for okay. that. We yeah. do have it. I'm I mean, sorry. It's just like no, it's just for curse of others. Like sometimes, some like for certain um, of the um, the people that you interview, sometimes it might be a little hard for other people to hear like the um, the words they're trying to say. So just like in the future, and you guys, you guys said you have to do it, so that's good. 
That's good to keep in mind. Sorry about that. I prefer it. My wife and I, we actually, no joke, we watch closed captioning everything. We prefer it. Flanny. Legend. Hello, gentlemen. Scottish. <laughs> this is a question particularly for Ben, uh, and it's a little bit of a two question, though you can probably answer it all in one. Um, knowing your filmography and the trajectory that you've gone, but also particularly from this film and your experience in the subject matter, uh, deeper than uh, just the state of uh, disability, more about the state of pursuit of romance and the pursuit of longing, or just the experience of longing, rather. Um, I was curious how that colored your own reflections of your pursuit of romance or whatever you think in that matter. And the second part of the question, knowing the trajectory of your filmography, uh, you've gone from a kid who loves skate videos to making those skate videos, which translated to Heart Child, which translated to Tin Soldiers, which translated to everything else down to here. So I guess ultimately beyond uh, your reflections on romance, most importantly, I'm really curious from this point on, what kind of films do you want to make, Benny? <laughs> that's a good question. Oh man, that's an inside joke for me and Flan Time. He's me and him are roommates for three years. One of the, he's my angel. Uh, so, so you want me to talk about my like my love life and how this film has changed my love life? My perspective on love. Uh, how much time does he have? <laughs> Probably not that much. Could be another movie. No, I. I <laughs> <laughs> it 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 hasn't. Um, it's definitely made me say. Uh, this is this is the hardest question <laughs> to ever answer. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you you want something really unconditional. I mean, I'm 29 years old and. It'd just be nice to have something unconditional. But I don't want to stand here and say, oh, well, I made a film like this, so I'll, you know, anything goes. I'm just like, whatever. It, it, you, I want to find something that works for me, but it, it also feels unconditional. So, and I hope every, everybody finds that. I like the way the people in the film clearly had found that. Um, but I don't, you know, I don't know. I, I'm not like a completely changed man just because I made this film or anything, that's just honest. Um, I still struggle with the same thing that everybody else does, I guess. I mean, you know, being conditioned the way we were in society and having to transcend that is very difficult. So, but we work on it and getting older helps, you know? Um, and then what kind of films do I want to make, my Flanagan? <laughs> well, I definitely, uh, if Dan agrees right now, <laughs> right here, to lay down 30 I don't. grand. <laughs> no, I, I really don't. want to make a film about bipolar disorder. Um, I feel like it would be really cathartic for me to learn about it more and um, to, I don't really want to. I've already started it and I'm going to do it. It's just a matter of getting funding because I've been working for like 15 cents a day for the past 10 years. And that's not really a joke. And uh, it'd be really nice to be honored with some serious funding. But whatever. I mean, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I'm still going to get after it. But um, that's the kind of film that I want to make. I feel like that's my next kind of dream project. And uh, it's amazing how much you learn and how much you grow and heal from just learning from others who go through something similar to yourself. When you, you know, I don't go out to the bar, have coffee with people, or go to a movie and talk about like the most intense conversation, have the most intense conversations ever. It's when you sit them down and you have a camera on, and you're like, this is what I want to know. Like, let's, let's learn about it together. So that's, that's why I like to make films that are cathartic for me because making the, doing the film in its process is where you really learn the most, I feel. So that's, that's what I want to do next. So. Hopefully Dan will come on board. I think that's a great place to wrap this up. Uh, so let's give a big round of applause <laughs> to the filmmakers and to Ari. And I want to thank you all for coming.